All right, today we have another exercise, which is create a function that counts and returns the number of characters in a string. Here you have the prototype. So this time the function has to return an integer and takes as an input a char star, namely a string. It's gonna be pretty simple if you understood the previous one. So it will be a very fast video. Here you see, you have all the program in all its glory. We have, as usual, the main function and our ft str land function. All right, let's start from the very beginning. I declare a char star s, so a pointer to a char, and I assign to this string the value pi. All right, so with these two lines, I have a string with the value h i exclamation point, and of course, a zero that is appended by the compiler automatically. Then what do I do? I call a printf, just to test out my function, flushing out in the standard output the value of the len of my string. All right? So we jump inside the function strlen. As an input, of course, I have my string. Here I declare a variable that I call size. And uh, inside this variable, I will accumulate the number of chars of my string. So initially, my size is equal to zero, of course. Then I say while, while what? while at string plus size. So initially size is gonna be zero. So string plus size is a pointer arithmetic operation. In this case, uh, the value pointed by string is a char, namely one byte. So every time I increase by a value, the pointer will increase exactly by that value. If I increase this pointer by one, the increase will be exactly by one. If the object pointed was an integer, for example, namely four bytes, an increase by one would be resulted in an increase by four. Okay, I think you perfectly know this concept by now. So I say at string plus size, in human words, is the value which is found at position str plus size different from zero. Namely, it is not the sentinel value backslash zero. If this condition is true, what do you do? Well, you just increase the value of size plus one. Here I used the prefix operator, but it is equal to use the postfix operator. The prefix operator is a little more performance, but it's not really important by now. So I perform my loop every time the size increases by one until I reach the final condition. Namely, when at str plus size is equal to the backslash zero aka the sentinel value, indicating the, the end of the string. When I am in that position, well, the cycle ends, I go on line 23 and I return the value type. All right, I think it, it is super easy, this program. So I don't, I really cannot spot difficult angles of this program. I don't know why to explain more. If you understood all the previous stuff, this is plain vanilla easy for you, okay? Now I want to show you another solution that you may find interesting. This time we are going to solve the problem with a recursive function. Again, I will go into the details of this darn recursion later when we will uh, stumble upon the chapter regarding recursion. But by now, just watch the code and try by yourself to understand maybe how it works. As you can see, I have my main function, which is specular to the previous one. I declare a string and I assign the value hi to the string. Then I call my function stringland recursive. Inside my function, I say if not at str. Let me explain better this point. Here, as usual, I reference my pointer at str. So I check which char is inside the byte pointed by the address str. If this value is the zero, is the final sentinel value, I just invert it with this not. The not operator is gonna invert the value. If it is false, it becomes true and vice versa. Very simple. So I dereference my str. If it is zero, this is also false, right? And if this is false, inverting it, it becomes true. On the contrary, if I dereference my address and I get a char, if I invert it, what do I get? Well, I get false. I spend some time on this expression. It's, it's easy if you think about that. Just First of all, the reference, the address, str. If you get zero, it becomes true because I invert the value. If it is every value but zero, it becomes false automatically because I just invert every true value with a false. Pretty easy. So if I am in the sentinel value, what do I do? I return zero. 
course, I in the last position. It means that the string is over. Otherwise, what do I do? Otherwise, return what? The function itself. So I am calling the function Srilan inside itself. Here we are, our recursion case, with the value str plus one. Okay. And then I say, given this function, add one to it. Maybe you don't understand at all what is going on. So I will show you something more visual, all right? First of all, let's try if it works and if I am saying the truth or I'm, or I'm a charlatan. All right, let's, let's compile as usual our code and then we just run. You see, three, three, exactly the length of my i string. All right, now I want to do something with you. I just cut the program and I copy it. Then as usual, Google C Tutor. All right, let's go. Of course, I go into this beautiful service and I just copy my code. And now we can visualize what is going on, which is pretty useful when you are dealing with pointers and recursion. Okay, let's go on. So I declare my string i, as you can see, beautifully seen from here. Then I call my function print. Here becomes my string length recursion. So I say, watch carefully now. Here I say, if not a string, string points to a char, a char namely a value, this h. So the statements become false, right? Because I will convert a true value to a false value, thanks to the exclamation point operator. So I skip this if and I go on. I recall my function again, giving this time str plus one. You see, this time str points exactly one position later in my string, of course, str plus one, pointer arithmetic, okay? I go on with the code, next, again, every time the same principle, I will skip my if because I'm not at the last position. I go on again. Now, what is happening at this level of recursion? You see my pointer is at the last position, at the last zero. So, so this if this time is true because at str, at str, you see, is equal to zero. I invert it so it becomes a true value, okay? Next, return zero. So this function ends. This is my base case, as we say in recursion. And then we return back. I click next, and the last recursion call is finished. Okay, now I have to harvest my recursion. So every time I get this operation. So this expression here at the first harvest phase is giving me back zero, right? The last case has returned me back zero. So it is zero plus one. How much is it? One. The previous function, this value, how much is it? Well, this time is one. 1 plus 1 is 2. Again, this time the value is going to be 2 plus 1 is going to be 3. All right, we've done it. You see, we have made a series of calls, recursive calls, and with this series of calls, we, we got the final 3 because at every function call, I got plus 1. So how many function calls did I have until I have reached the final 0? Thanks to this recursion, I've been able to make a series of addiction precisely the same additions to the number of chars. All right, maybe it's tricky for you now to understand what is going on with this recursion. I repeat to you, I will explain you thoroughly what is going on, so don't worry about that. This indeed is not even a good solution for this problem because why you should call these many functions to count the number of chars inside a string. This is a case in which iteration is better than recursion. Recursion is a tool in your toolbox that you can apply with specific problems. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. Of course, spend your time with this C tutor. Visualize what is going on with recursion. Try to understand by yourself because at the end of the day, that's the only way by which you can learn about recursion. You have to understand by yourself. At a certain point, it will click. It will click with your brain on a certain point. Oh, what the fuck, I understand what is going on. Amazing. This is the experience with this concept of recursion in computer science. So for this problem, basically, that's it. This is the, the other solution for you. And the previous one with the while is better, more suited, more adapt. Okay, let's see on the next one. Congrats.